Welcome to Revlog, where we have some new content coming for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. We, so. we hope we'll be renewed for another season. <laughs> <laughs> so in about a month, we've, we've got a Daniel special that's coming. That's right. So what, what, are, you, what are you looking forward to um, on this Daniel special, Brian? Coffee? What? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, that was my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you are going to answer coffee. Yes, yeah, right. That's right. The pastor has asked us to to experience a Daniel fast. Now, funnily enough, he doesn't drink coffee, so yeah, it's so been a real what, sacrifice. What's it to him? Yeah, <laughs> you know. But it's it's there's some great stories in Daniel. There are and some so, great stories and, in Daniel. and some really deep weeds that we, we get to wade through as well. So it's yeah. going to be a challenging and exciting study. I think so. I'm looking forward to to contemplating uh, with Daniel again how we navigate when all of our props are kicked out from under wow, us. Wow, that's it. And I, that's I think great. Daniel that's shows great. us. Yes, yeah. yeah, so if you want to read ahead in March, we're going to begin uh, the new Revlog special on Daniel and begin our study in Daniel. It's going to be good, so you can begin to, to study that with us and look forward to that in, in about a month. Yeah. Um, until then, let's finish the miracles in Matthew. So this week we that's are good. in uh, Matthew chapter 17, that's right. mm -hmm. verses 14 through 21. Uh, another healing story. Aaron, why don't you kick this off for us? Yeah. What were your initial thoughts well, on this and story? Interestingly, interestingly enough, this is the cover of our our bulletin each week. It, it was the inspiration for for this uh, oh, the, oh, the, mountain yes. the mountain up there. That's and, right. And so that that's, that's right. what. Um, so if, if you've been wondering, or if we haven't explained that, that's that's a. I was where beginning to from. picture a, a lunatic child. No, the no, front that, of no, the, that. no. Okay. <laughs> yes, it was. The, it's the mountain. That's right. Okay, so this is an what? interesting story. Uh, uh, and what I really went to in my translation said, um, when the disciples came back to Jesus said, why couldn't we do this? Right. Uh, it says, because of your unbelief. And, and that word triggered something. And so I looked up in, Ma in Mark chapter nine, um, the father who comes with the, the, the demon possessed son and, and says, uh, I believe, help my unbelief. Right. And so I, I just, I love that, that, that he comes to him going, you know, I, I believe, I want to believe, you know, I, I, I recognize there are some yeah. things that I don't understand. Help me there. Right. And and the disciples, on the other hand, don't recognize those areas of, of their oh, lives that, that yeah. are still, that they're still holding on to. Is this a moment of pride? What, what are you uh, suggesting I, there? What I, I think, I look at them and I, as I look at myself, recognizing that, that, I want God to be the the author of my life. I want mm -hmm. Him to be in everything, but I but there are still some things that I, right. that I hold on to, and it's maybe He hasn't revealed those things to me yet, and He needs to do that through a kind of a convicting mm -hmm. word, or or maybe it's just uh, I yeah. I haven't dealt with it yet, and and I think that's where the this, Jesus used this as a way to say there are some parts of your life that you have not surrendered to me. Yeah, there there are blind spots in our lives, like yes. the disciples, aren't there? It's a, it's a good good uh, good thing for repentance. Yeah. To remember. <laughs> Absolutely, so. he just got that in there, didn't he? Right. So, the, the shoehorn. The, yeah. <laughs> no, it's really not. <laughs> Brian, yeah. help us. What were your, your initial thoughts here on this text? Jesus can come off here as a little curmudgeonly, I think. He but does. I, uh, he he he's pretty you know, he, curt with he's him. Just, he's curt. He's direct. And, and I think uh, if he if we think of him as a curmudgeon, we're being a little too oversensitive. I think you know right. we we don't. But he's he's just being frank, and and I think. What Frank is, or Kurt? Yeah. <laughs> Coy or yeah. Perch? Uh, I don't know. Uh, but if you think Jesus is Frank or Kurt, email Brian, B R Y A N. The part of Frank this week. Is, uh, so he's being Frank. Jesus is being Frank with is, his disciples. He is. Uh, he is putting his finger on what I think plagues a lot of us, and that is we exist as closet materialists. I mean, what do you what do you mean by closet materialists? That that we function on a daily basis often as if the material world, mm -hmm. what we can see and feel, is really all that we have to deal with right. and all that, we're, that we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. And until we're confronted by something like, like this supernatural act, we don't confront it. We don't deal with it. We, and we don't. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we feel discombobulated because it's... It, it, Things like this don't respond to uh, f shows of force, yeah. you know, or, or whatever, and <clears throat> or our cunning ways or our you know imagination or whatever. But um, but we are. Uh, Jesus says in effect that this 
or, or what's behind all of this is that the veil between the the spiritual realm and the material realm is is one that is is actually not as thick as mm-hmm. we would think and it, and and he was teaching his disciples to to see the world as it really is if they were yeah. going to learn to do things like deal with uh, unclean spirits then they were going to have to know that they're that they they wrestle not with flesh and blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, amen. That's right. That's right. Yeah, good word. Um, Aaron, what what question came to mind as you read this? Well, text? I mean, it's low hanging fruit here, but but I w- I would say, where are those areas in my life that that I have not surrendered fully? That the 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 things that hinder me mm-hmm. from serving as fully as I can because of pride, like you said, mm-hmm. or just or just uh, areas that are just blind spots to me. Right. So uh, I want to, where are those, Lord? That needs to be a prayer, a question, a, a continual search for us. Yeah. Yeah. If you, Brian, what question came to mind? What am I not seeing about the world as it really is? Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there are things, I, I think we could become a lot more spiritually sighted than we are. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. What am I not seeing? Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Now, we, we just went through this whole thing. We didn't even mention the miracle. Oh, yeah. That well, that's true. Um, it, that, that Jesus does heal this young man. He does. And and Jesus is, he does exactly, uh, he he behaves exactly like somebody who is not a materialist. He, he behaves like somebody who says, I'm going to act as a, uh, according to reality here. I'm going to speak to this spirit. Uh, I'm yeah. going to go directly there. And, and it's not weird or it's not untoward. Um, Jesus does exactly what needs doing in a world in which there are spirits and in which there is a spiritual reality. I, I yeah. think the, also the periphery is so important in all these stories, just the, how the disciples act, how the the... the the father comes to him and prostrates himself. You know, mm-hmm. he bends his knee and, and says, uh, you know, Lord, uh, I think in, in all these stories, you know, how the, the, the women have come to him and, and, and asked and how the disciples have dealt with the crowds. There are so many things that Jesus is doing and the way he responds is instructive, informative for us to, to say, this is why he, he treated this miracle this way. Well, your mm-hmm. point about the disi- disciples' lack of self-awareness is, uh, is exactly because they they don't see what's really there, right. and and so Jesus says, uh, you're you're going to have to exercise this part of your being. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to seek what's really true, and and Jesus brings them along. Amen. Yeah, amen. Like this. We'd we'd love to hear your thoughts on this passage as well. If you would comment below.